Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. It's Michelle. I'm happy to be here with you today. And today, I've got a little bit different of a teach for you. So let me just go ahead and make sure I'm live, 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 because this one is going to be good. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. So as Facebook is sending out your notifications, come on in, drop on in as you're coming in. You can down in the comments, let me know that you're here. And <laughs> good morning, Mel, good to see you. Let me know that you're here, let me know where you're coming in from and that you're ready for this teach. Super excited to have you guys. Um, I haven't been in the group for a little while and what I noticed I haven't done in a little while is giving you a good old Michelle quality confidence teach. So that's what we've got today. And I've named this broadcast the two ways you know that a decision has the power to move you to your next level of success. Okay, so two ways that you know a decision has the power to move, move you to your next level of success. And I'm, I, I, I actually love doing these uh, broadcasts that, that are confidence teaches because you guys being in this group, yeah, you're looking to be able to put your image together and dress better and maybe find some style or whatever, but that really does in the end come down to confidence. And so shedding some light on what that means and how I've been able to help women transform their confidence to give you a little more to think about as you're on that journey is my absolute joy. I just love it. So we're going to start with story time. Are you guys ready? Story time. If you're ready for story time in the comments, put it's story time, Michelle. Well, I have a sip of my coffee this morning. It's story time. So story time as it comes to confidence. I'm going to take you back all the way back, all the way back to when I was 18. And at 18, uh, hi Elizabeth, good to see you. At 18, I was getting ready to graduate high school and I knew I wanted to be in business because my dad was an entrepreneur. <laughs> my dad was an entrepreneur. He was a dentist, but he ran it like a business. I'm telling you, I remember setting up his website for his dental office, which in our part of Canada, you actually couldn't do. It was against the law to advertise as a dentist. Can you believe that? Um, but because I was taking a business degree, I set up his website and this was in the days of not a website. Okay. This was like nineties. Okay, it was like the first dental website ever. Anyway, flashing back to when I was 18, getting ready to go to business school because I knew I wanted to be a business. My dad was an entrepreneur. I was going to be in business as well. And when, remember in the old days when you used to go to uh, the guidance counselor's office and they would show you all the universities or colleges that were, might be for you, right? Well, my guidance counselor, Mrs. Eagle, if you girls are in local, you know her. Mrs. Eagle said, Michelle, you have the grades, you have the uh, extracurricular activities, you have all of the package to be able to go to the top business school in Canada. You have it all. And she showed me the, she showed, Mrs. Eagle picked up the, the calendar of the universities and she showed me the, the calendar, remember the old book in paper that you had to flip through to get your courses? <laughs> she showed me the calendar of Queen's University. And on the front of the calendar was Grant Hall and it was, it's like a gorgeous limestone clock tower um, with the tin roof that is green from oxidation and it had all the ivy twisting around Grant Hall. And I saw the front of that calendar and I was like, I didn't even care it was in the inside. Like on the inside it was like all that boring like newsprint with all the like courses you could take. I saw the picture of Grant Hall that said Queen's University and that crest and I said to Mrs. Eagle, I'm going there. I don't even know what the school is. I don't even really know where it is. I saw Grant Hall and I was like, I'm going there. And she's like, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. She's like, so it was like, I sold, right? Sold. I'm going to the best business school in Canada. That's what I have to do. But in order to go, I had to apply, super competitive. I had to, um, I, I knew that if I was going to go to that school, I would need somewhat of a scholarship because it's top business school in Canada. It was expensive. And, uh, so I started to like prepare for that. Right. And basically what happened was 
a few months later after after doing all of that lovely applying and all that stuff, I got the letter in the mail that said, congratulations, Michelle, you have been admitted to Queen's University and you have earned a scholarship. So <laughs> I was like, sweet, this is the best thing ever. And just for my American friends who need reference, going to Queen's University from where I am is like going from Montana to Harvard. So it's going from rural to the top business school, okay? So I got that letter and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm going to Queen's. And then the thing set in. It set in what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. The decision ha had to be made to send the letter back to Queen's saying, yes, I'm in. Yes, I am deciding to attend. Yes, I'm putting it all on the line. But I knew I was gonna have to take, uh, I knew I needed that scholarship. I knew that I was going somewhere. I knew no one, I knew not one soul. I didn't know what the campus was like. I didn't know what the teachers were. I didn't know any of the people coming in because sometimes you go to college and you like your friend is over there too across the hall or something. I didn't know anyone. I didn't know how I was gonna get there. And in the end, I showed up to my dorm uh, a week before school started with two suitcases and one trunk. I had no idea how to get from the airport to my dorm or how to get this like 300 pound trunk up to my room and with the two suitcases, none. And yeah, you're right, Mel, it was scary. And so in the end I did, I wrangled my way and got that trunk off cargo and got it in, loaded into a cab and, and you know made good rapport with that cab driver who helped me take it up to my room and I found the keys and I got settled. And in the end, I attended Queen's University and I graduated with the top business school from Canada. But it took two things to make the decision to do that. Guys, here's the thing. At every moment in your life, there are going to be times when you need to make a decision that moves you forward. And you will know it by two things. And I tell this to every single woman who is considering anything that they know will move them up. Decisions and choices will be two things forever and that you know have the power to move forward. Number one, they are inconvenient. Number one, they are inconvenient. It was inconvenient for me to know that I was going, if, if I didn't get a scholarship, then I was going to have to take loans or take more loans in order to go to the school. That would have been inconvenient because I could have just stayed home and, and not had to do that extra step. It was inconvenient because I had to get on two planes and drive two hours from my home to get to that university that I wanted to attend. That's inconvenient because the nearest university is only two, two hours away. I could have just driven. My mom could have driven me there. Okay. It was inconvenient to not know how to get myself to my room. Like, I don't know. Am I going to need a cab or what? I don't know. The whole thing was inconvenient. And it was also the second thing. It was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable to know I'm not going to know a single soul. I'm going to go there and have zero friends in attendance. I'm going to go to a school where I don't know what, you know, they're in a totally different province, totally different state, totally different thing. I don't know what all those kids have learned. Am I going to measure up? That's uncomfortable. What was the environment? It was uncomfortable. But guys, those two things will always exist in a decision that has the power to move you forward. It is now up to you to decide how much you are willing to go out of that comfort zone. That's right. And move to that place of growth. Inconvenient and uncomfortable. It is always there when these things need to happen. And if you think about it in your own life, there will be times when this has happened to you. Maybe it wasn't university, but maybe it was entering a marriage. Maybe it was leaving a marriage. Maybe it's being able to invest in ourselves. Maybe it's starting a business, growing a business. Listen, guys, I've been in, in business for 20 years for myself, 20 years. 
And at every year of those businesses, all successful, by the way, there has been moments of inconvenient and uncomfortable. There's always moments. Daily, there should be moments. Because if you're not inconvenient and uncomfortable, you are not moving forward. And there's something else that those two things give you, okay? I did, Delena. I sure did. You know I did. <laughs> I waved that inconvenient, uncomfortable banner forever. And girls, my mentorship will know it. <laughs> um, here's what else is also happening as you are living in inconvenient and uncomfortable. Something happens to you personally that is undeniable. Number one, well, character builds in that, okay? And there are three things that I think, uh, there are three things that I know are character building that are necessary to move forward in, in doing any of inconvenient and uncomfortable. Number one, you have to have humility. Humility. That's a sense of, listen, I don't know. And it comes with knowledge, right? Humility and knowledge. You have to be at a place where you're saying, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know it all. I don't know. And, and, and whether you say, I don't know, and I need that guidance, that's where you get out of that, that uncomfortable and you move to comfortable because some, someone is showing you, right? But it starts with humility. If you were in a place that say, you say, well, you know what, I know it. I just know how to do this. I know it all. I'm fine. I'm good. Inconvenient or uncomfortable will always still exist. You always have to move to a place of humility. The second thing you have to move to is a place of self-discovery. Because when you see that you need to be out of your comfort zone, the thing that saves you is going inside. Who do I have to be right now in order to move forward? So for me, when I'm getting off the plane and I have two huge suitcases and a 300 pound trunk and everybody else has taken their baggage off the little plane and gone on about their merry way, who do I have to be in this moment to get this inconvenient and uncomfortable situation <laughs> from the airport to my dorm room? Well, it causes you to stand. It causes you to stand, step up. It causes you to look for ways to be able to stretch yourself. And in that moment, I had to get real friendly with the cab driver. Listen, this man had to want to help me. <laughs> so you got to get to a place of humility. Got to get to a place of self, of, of self discovery in reflection. And you got to get to a place of resourcefulness. You got to know how to figure it out and be able to trust yourself that you can. And you guys trust in yourself that you can figure it out. Resourcefulness and resiliency is a confidence play. It is directly related to your amount of confidence. If you have confidence in yourself, it is easy to be resourceful. And resourcefulness, guys, people think that um, you know, people think when I say resourcefulness, they think financial right away, which is true. That's a, that's a form of resourcefulness. Resourcefulness is also about, um, effort and time and gumption. Okay. And so as women, especially when faced with an opportunity that seems uncomfortable and inconvenient, many women will just freeze, Ugh. freeze. And so their ability to really think creatively in terms of resourcefulness gets frozen too. What we need to do is breathe, first of all. And second of all, look at those moments when we're about to freeze as an opportunity to say, what is inconvenient here and what's making me uncomfortable? Look at them in the face and go, how can I work around that? How can I figure it out? How can I dive into something that I know is for me and go around it. Because guys, when we learn how to be resilient and resourceful, we become confident. We don't become confident by saying, I want to be confident. We don't become confident by posting a bunch of things on social media 
or a quote or whatever. That's not how you become confident. That is not. Confidence comes from finishing. And girls, h and Elite, you know. Confidence comes from finishing what we intend. It comes from winning, okay? It comes from winning. And so when we win, when we are resourceful and resilient and we get through and past inconvenient, uncomfortable, we see a win. Yes, awesome. And when we see a win, that bumps the confidence one little bit. And then we want to do the next one. Ooh, this one seems uncomfortable. No, no, we're going to go around it. And we see a win. And then we get more confident. And it's, it is a process that has to happen over time. And many women have never done that process. They've never done inconvenient, uncomfortable, resilient, resourceful, win. Celebrate. That's right. That's right, Elizabeth. Right? They've never done that track. So all you've done is either fail and lose and feel, and feel self-doubt or look at things as hard and self-doubt, but you haven't seen the path. And then you have not practiced the path over and over and over again. Because guys, here's the thing also. If, if you haven't ever won against inconvenient and uncomfortable, your ability to do that is this big. You have to start doing it in order to develop the ability to do it, in order to develop the confidence to do it, in order to develop the ability to do it. And if you've watched any of the interviews of my clients inside this group, that's what they've done. Because when I work with my clients, I train them in this process through the process of image. They win every single week so that it trains in them the ability to win and be resourceful all the way through. And when you change not only that pattern, and then you change what you see on the outside of the woman who's creating that pattern, you absolutely explode your results. Ask any of them, Elizabeth, Delena, Romola, any of them. Because who you see now through the mirror is who's creating the success and that success pattern, who is then practicing that success pattern and creating confidence in herself who is becoming that confident woman and she creates it over and over and over again. But without both of those things and seeing the inconvenient, uncomfortable, understanding the process of resourcefulness and resiliency, and then doing it over and over again, women get stuck. And how many of y'all now we're on the, on the tail end, if you're watching this on the replay, if you're stuck, write stuck inside the comments. If you are stuck in anything in your life, your business, your relationship, um, your sense of self, uh, being able to move forward, being able to get dressed, that's stuck too. It's because one, two, or all of these things are not existing. And you don't have the, re the, um, the knowledge to be able to switch it around. Melanie, there you go, okay? And here's the thing, Melanie says, I need to get uncomfortable. Well, I would, ve I would venture that you already are. <laughs> no, one does, no, one, uh, no one says, I, wanna, I need to get uncomfortable. They already know they are. There is an area in your life that is itchy. That's what I say. If it's itchy, that means you're uncomfortable. And when I mean itchy, I mean it's not sitting quite right. It's not bringing you all the joy it could. It's not lighting you on fire. It's not getting you up in the morning and saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is my life. Because be clear, I get up and say that. I get up and say that. And the women of HS Elite also get up and say that. I can't believe this is my life. This is amazing. Most women are not doing that. And if you, and if you aren't, there's something not quite right, which means you're uncomfortable. And then something else has to happen, gals. If you know you're uncomfortable, then you have to ask yourself, but what is it costing me? Because we as people do not do anything if it's not costing us something. We don't make a change. We don't get out of in inconvenient and uncomfortable. We don't figure out resourcefulness. We don't get resilient. We don't do anything unless it's costing us something. And I don't mean a little cost. I mean a great cost. 
if it's costing us like, you know, well, you know, I could, I could make $10 extra a day, you're not going to move. Mm -mm. It's not enough. It's costing me a couple customers a day, cost me a couple hundred bucks a week, you're not going to move. No. No. Why? Because why? The brain's like, we want to stay safe, so it's cool. Like, it's only $200 a week, I don't have to move. If it's costing you thousands per month, if it's costing you hundreds of thousands per year in the promotion you should have had two years ago, and that's, so then $200,000 lost in income might be costing you something. That's the only way people change, guys, is when it's costing. Maybe it's costing us your marriage. Maybe it's costing you connection with your partner. Maybe it's costing you the ability to meet the person you want to meet. When our decisions and our um, level of comfort and our level of valuing ourselves costs us something deep, that is when we change and not before. So if you know that about yourself, ask yourself what it's costing you. Ask yourself. Hmm? Right, Elizabeth said in her interview, and I'll link it above, she said it was costing her her creativity, it was costing her herself, capital S, by not being confident in herself. She was doing her career, going through the motions, but it was costing her herself, her ability to see the creative artist that she is. And that was costing her joy. And guys, joy, is worth a lot. It is worth everything in our lives. So I kind of took a tangent there, but they are so all related. And, you know, people, a lot of you guys are new into this group. You know, you're dropping in, you're wondering, what is this Michelle? What is she talking about? What's going on with image? It is far greater than you realize because it is about making the connection between how you see yourself, your image, your mindset, who you're becoming, and your next level of success, which does not show up if you do not have the confidence to claim it. And that when you are offered the opportunity to claim it through decisions and choices, you will go through this before you actually claim it. It will be inconvenient. It will not come at the perfect time. It will be uncomfortable in resources, financial, time, space, relationships. But in knowing that it is necessary to move forward, you will develop humility to say, I don't know the answer by myself. You will go into personal reflection and, and go, I need to discover more about who I need to be to make this happen. And then you will become resourceful if it is costing you enough. That's the wheel. And that's the wheel I help my clients create. And, the, and you know, lots of people will ask me, well, Michelle, can I just do the clothing part? No, <laughs> not with me. <laughs> not with me. Because you will always go back to what is holding you back. Go over to the tips. I challenge you. Sure. Go to Pinterest pin all you want. It will not fix this. It will not fix it. So how did that all go, guys? What is it costing you? There's a problem we admit and the problem, the problem is we know we don't have to admit. Okay, Diana, it cut off because it was a long comment. No problem. I'll read it after. Do you guys have any other questions? Do you have any questions? I mean, questions, comments, this one's a little longer than normal. <laughs> I hadn't done a confidence scope in a little while, so I thought, well, oh yeah, and this is not a scope, I know. Sometimes, whatever, Periscope, Facebook, live. Mm. Mel, I'm always here for you, whenever you're ready. So speaking of being ready, gals, if this spoke to you, and you can see yourself, and you see yourself, your yourself in how you're holding yourself back and you know that there is a link inside everything that I have just told you from story time all the way through inconvenient uncomfortable 
all the way through needing to develop the character, all the way through needing to develop resourcefulness and resiliency, and you know that you will not create what's next for you without getting it right, there is a link above. The link above connects you to my free breakthrough strategy session. It is a confidence strategy session. And in that session, I do two, three things for you. Number one, I get really clear about who you need to be visible for, who you need to be visible for, for you to claim your next level of success. Number two, I show you the exact mindset block that is keeping you from being visible with how you present your image and that will sabotage you going forward, even past your image and into your confidence. The exact block. And then, number three, I will let you know what the step-by-step -step is in order for you to change that and what the trajectory looks like if you let it be the same. If you know you need to change, click that link above. I have a few slots left this week. And I will tell you that slots are limited, they go quickly, and I am wrapping up my spring enrollment. So if, if this is time for you to change, get on my books now because the doors are closing. The doors are closing for spring enrollment with me. And here's what happens on a call, guys, because some of you might not be aware. I get you those three pieces of clarity on the call. But on the call, that is my job, to get you that clarity. If and only if I know I can help you move to 100% transformation, do I offer the opportunity to help you? If I can't help you, I will give you all sorts of other resources that help you move forward in whether, whatever aim you're looking for. But that call is for clarity. It is for those three things. And if I can help you, I will completely tell you and show you how, and if not, that's fine too. The call is for clarity. So if that's you, like I said, click above, they go fast, the window's closing, and it's probably the, it's probably going to be the most important 45 minutes for you in terms of clarity that you will ever spend on yourself, your image, your business, and maybe your life. Because clarity is king. You will know either what to do or what not to do. And then you get to make a choice if that inconvenience and uncomfortableness and what it's costing you is worth it to you. And I do it because I love giving women clarity. I love that. I love it when the light bulb goes on. I love it when sometimes the tears show up because the tears mean that there's truth. And when you can see your truth, girls, you can make decisions from your real truth instead of whatever farce you're telling yourself, whatever the world is telling you, that's where you show up is in the truth. So that's what I have for you. And if it's important to you, click above. And if you're still learning and it's still exploring, make sure that you click into the image um, confidence library where I have all my other videos. I'll link it above after this broadcast. And you will know <laughs> very quickly if this is something you need to fix for yourself. Okay? So everyone, oh yeah, that was you all those months ago. Discover your authentic self. Thanks, Romola. And Elizabeth, Romola, awesome. Thank you guys all for joining me. I know this was a little longer than normal, but <clears throat> you know sometimes I get fired up. And if you're here on the replay and made it all the way to the end, congratulations. Thank you for being here. And just sit back and consider. But remember, if you consider and you know that this is deep down, the first and best way to start to fix something is just to take action. All right. You're welcome, guys. Have a wonderful day. Take care for now.